Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us once again for Health Professional Radio. We'll be speaking with Dr. Terrence Rooney. He's joining us to talk about some new data that was presented from the Phase 2A IRIS Proof of Concept Study. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Rooney. Thank you so much for joining us. Morning, Neil. Great to be here again. How are you? I'm doing well. For listeners who may not be familiar with you as a contributor, give us a, a bit of your professional background along uh, you know, with a little uh, uh, personal information about yourself, if you would, and then let's jump right into the study, okay? Oh, sure thing, Neil. So I'm a rheumatologist and internal medicine doc by, by background, but for the last uh, 15 years or more, I've been in full-time R&D in the uh, pharmaceutical industry, and uh, these days I head up rheumatology R&D at Johnson & Johnson. And based just outside uh, Philadelphia. This Phase 2A IRIS Proof of Concept study. Give us some insight into the study. Yeah, great. So, Neil, we're just back from the American College of Rheumatology Annual Scientific Congress. So that's the primo congress on the rheumatology calendar. And it's uh, really, uh, one of my colleagues said recently, it's like the uh, Super Bowl of rheumatology. Mm-hmm. In a way, it's more like the Soccer World Cup, so it's the biggest international <laughs> congress. Um we're, we were pleased to present results of uh, the study IRIS RA. So that's a, a proof of mechanism uh, study of an, an investigational therapy called nipocalumab uh, in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Mm-hmm. And it specifically was in patients with difficult to treat rheumatoid arthritis. In other words, those who had already tried and failed at least one advanced therapeutic uh, agent. So it established proof of mechanism for that investigational therapy and that uh, disease and of interest uh, has supported its progression into another study where it's going to be used in combination with another advanced therapy and that study is called DAISY RA. Mm. I'll maybe give a little bit of information about that in a moment. Um, the, the proof of mechanism was established by Nipocalumab showing um, numerical improvements in efficacy signals across primary and secondary efficacy endpoints in the trial. Which to do with which are to do with how patients with rheumatoid arthritis feel and function, and then finally, in terms of the mechanism, nipocalumab works by blocking a thing called FCRM, which is called the neonatal FC receptor, and that's responsible for recycling immunoglobulins in the body, and therefore, when you block it, you can lower levels of immunoglobulins, including antibodies called autoantibodies that may be directed against yourself and might be associated with. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases. Let me elaborate on those a little bit in our conversation. Let's let our listeners in on the, the current landscape uh, for treating patients with RA. What does it look like right now? You know, um, the principle of treating RA these days is the so-called peak to target principle. So the idea is to take people from um, having lots of active disease, which is usually associated with inflammation, pain, and stiffness in the joints, to a state of really good disease control, so treating to a target of remission or low disease activity as a compromise goal. And over the past 20, 25 years or so, uh, the field changed dramatically with the introduction of so-called targeted therapies. So these are molecules that were engineered based on an understanding of how the disease works to interrupt specific immune pathways and improve how people feel, function, and hopefully survive. There are presently five or six different classes of targeted therapies approved for the treatment of RA, the first of which, interestingly, came from our own company. So we're delighted to still be working on this field. Why are we still working there? Unfortunately, despite the welcome advances of the classes of targeted therapy that have arrived over the last 20, 25 years, a substantial proportion of patients with RA don't get to where they need to be, that state of remission or low disease activity. So there remains substantial in that medical need. Hmm. Now, you mentioned pain and, and stiffness in the joints. Elaborate on how RA impacts the quality of life in patients just a bit further. Yeah, in terms of the pathology, the inner lining of the uh, rheumatoid joint becomes inflamed. So normally that inner lining of the joint is uh, smooth and a thin layer of tissue. But in rheumatoid arthritis, it becomes angry, inflamed, and swollen. And as a result, patients... Uh, small and large joints on both sides of the body uh, become quite painful, very stiff in the morning. Now, that's associated with significant impairment in physical function, activities of daily living. You know, up to half of people 
with rheumatoid arthritis will experience significant work disability if they're in the workforce. Mm. And um, that's associated even with a, a shortening of life expectancy unless the disease is treated um, to, to good treatment targets. The, the second consequence of that is that the soft inner lining of the joint produces uh, chemicals that can destroy the structural elements of the joint, and that can leave people with significant joint deformity. What were some of the key findings of this study? So we um, were very pleased. We're always excited to take a novel mechanism of action into a new disease. So uh, key findings were that um, we established proof of mechanism. So what does that mean? So we saw evidence of improvement across measures of uh, relevant disease activity for patients. So we look at composite sores that include how many swollen and tender joints people have, how patients are feeling their disease is going, and how doctors feel the patient's disease is going. And we saw improvements across those in the overall population of patients. Of real interest, we saw bigger improvements in disease activity measures in people who had the highest levels of autoantibodies at baseline. So the way nipocalamide works is that it reduces levels of immunoglobulin, like I mentioned, including autoantibodies that are uh, present in some three-quarters or more of patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And in the people who have the highest levels of those autoantibodies at baseline, which we call ACPAs, anti-citrullinated peptide antibodies, we saw that the size of the efficacy treatment effect approximately doubled. Now, when you put that together with the fact that our next trial for nipocalamide called DAISY-RA, which is currently enrolling, um, evaluated in combination with another mechanism of action, uh, tumor necrosis factor inhibition, which is one of the well-established uh, advanced therapy mechanisms in rheumatoid arthritis. Mm-hmm. This is pretty exciting. When I first got into rheumatology therapeutics, the two next big things in in RA, we're going to be combination targeted therapy and precision medicine. In other words, looking at using biomarkers, which drugs would work best for which patients. And it's just great to be working on something that's hoping to bring that to life now. As far as long-term treatment of RA, what does the study mean and the study that's coming? So we're always on the lookout, as I mentioned earlier on, for <clears throat> novel therapeutics that might raise the bar in terms of the proportion of people getting to treatment target which is remission or low disease activity. We're currently enrolling the DAISY trial around the world, including including here in the U.S. The important thing, I suppose, for patients is that companies like ourselves are constantly working to move the needle and develop new mechanisms of action that, that might give them a better chance of achieving those treatment targets of low disease activity and remission. And so ultimately, that's what we're about. Is there anything that you'd like to add for our listeners and then give us a website where we can learn more? Oh, thanks, Neil. The rheumatology therapeutic arena has come such a long way over the last 20 or 25 years with the advent of advanced or targeted therapies, and that includes in rheumatoid arthritis. That said, though, just to reiterate, unfortunately, still a substantial proportion of people aren't where they need to be despite the availability of those therapies. And so uh, it's great to be working here in the investigative community and at J&J, on uh, novel therapeutics that might move the needle for those patients and give them better treatment options. In terms of where to look and get more information, www.jansen.com. Terrence, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for returning, and I'm looking forward to another uh, conversation as these studies progress. Oh, my pleasure, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Terrence Rooney. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au, also at Anchor, Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.